You know, I think for a lot of folks, the term regenerative agriculture is something that is completely new to them. Um, and I think it's important that we take a step back and really frame this for everyday people and why this conversation is so important. Uh, so let's start with basic food production 101. We grow, particularly when it comes to growing crops, um, from our soil. Soil is an essential requirement to that. And Dr. Schottman, I want to make sure that, that we understand what is happening to the soil in the United States and, and frankly, across the world, um, such that regeneration, this idea of regeneration is necessary. What is happening to the current U.S. Uh, soil supply, we, we shall say, we shall call it? Thank you. Um, it's a great it's a great question. I think one of the main concerns with soil resources as a essentially non renewable resource is that it is eroding um, and exiting areas where production happens and entering public waterways, uh, taking with it some unused uh, fertility nutrients, either manures or synthetic. Um, and pesticides and that this is having a negative ecological impact. So we're seeing with our, in the U.S. soil supply that we rely on to grow our crops and to, to serve as part of our food supply, um, decarbonization, erosion, desertification, and chemical pollution, which as you noted is resulting as well in reduced minerals and nutrients uh, that which can be drawn and put into our food supply, correct? That is correct, although it is important to remember that not all areas are equally vulnerable mm -hmm. to soil erosion at the scale that I think you are, you are pointing to. Mm -hmm. We're mostly concerned about areas where rainfall is expected to become much more variable and more intense, and we're concerned about farming systems that leave soil exposed, mm -hmm. um, such as cropping systems with a lot of tillage or a lot of mechanical cultivation, so, and in arid regions, uh, so regions as well. What does this mean about how long we have before we, the United States literally does not have enough arable topsoil to continue feeding the, the population that it's feeding now. What is the timeline that we have on, on how much topsoil we have left? So there was, a, there was a widely publicized report that came from a scientist at the UN FAO that said we have approximately 60 years left in crop producing regions. However, I've personally looked into trying to track down the data that supports that report, and I haven't been successful in finding it. Miss mm -hmm. um, Boyd, indigenous farmers have taken a regenerative agriculture approach to their relationship with the land for millennia, correct? Correct. And uh, let's go through some of these practices so that I think folks get a better handle on how we can help preserve um, the supply. They include tactics like rotating and diversifying crops, correct? Yes. Um, integrating livestock and forestry on farms. Yes. And that also reduces the need for tilling and pesticide use as Dr. Schottman had just previously noted, correct? Correct. Um, and Dr. Schottman, the, the Department of Agriculture itself has recognized more than 170 other farming practices to be regenerative as well. Is that correct? I don't know that they are calling them regenerative, but there's a lot of overlap between regenerative and conservation practices. That is correct. And we're seeing now that even when you look at 50 or 60 years down the line, Dr. Shopman, just in 2019, farmer, U.S. farmers were unable to plant crops in 19.4 million acres of land due to record-breaking rainfall, correct? That is correct, yes. And as recently as this year, small and co-op farmers in the Midwest have had to pivot their lands from corn crops to others such as soy, uh, sunflowers and soybeans because of that record rain, correct? Uh, because of rainfall in this year, not in 2019, but yes, that is correct. And uh, finally, Mr. Um, Doty, am I right to understand that on top of contributing to improved water and air quality, soil health and ecosystem restoration, regenerative practices are also more productive ways to farm? Yeah, I, I believe so. I'm a 100% uh, uh, no-till farmer. My, uh, my, my father uh, was an early adapter in the, uh, in the 1970s, and um, I, I've continued that um, uh, tradition and uh, improved upon it. We also uh, use waterways, crop rotations, field borders, terraces, uh, ponds, and uh, our, our land 
continues to be to increase in production. Wonderful. Thank you very much.